In this assignment, I've chosen to play the game Super Hot, which was officially released in 2016, but originated in 2013 as part of the 7 day FPS challenge as a browser game. As you may have guessed, this makes the game a single player first person shooter. I'd argue that you can also call this a puzzle game. This is because time doesn't move unless you move, and therefore you have to carefully plan on what move you want to make, what enemy to kill first, or what weapon you want to use. I focus on Espinosa's Cybertech taxonomy to analyze Superot. Descriptions are dynamic. This can be easily recognized by enemy movement, and also different weapons makes your left mouse button act differently. Text on however, doesn't change unless you mod the game. Superot is definitely indeterminable because of the randomized enemy movement. And also, bullet spray can differ greatly with weapons like the shotgun. Even though both I and the game stated the opposite, time does indeed pass when the player learns nothing, only in very small amounts. Doing nothing makes the player stuck in a death loop until the player tries to progress or quits the game. This makes the game transient. Perspective is mostly personal, except in some parts of the story. I'll show you when I explain the user functions, considering the only times the personal perspective comes to play is during the interpretive part of the game. You can't access all of the game at all times. Only when you have completed the game, you can choose which level you want to play. And then, there are even more stuff to unlock. I found one example on an explicit link within the main menu. Clicking it took me to a website with a link that I can share with someone, who in return got a discount on the game. When it comes to user functions, the game gives the player messages on screen, and also messages in a sort of chat room where random inputs gets translated into a meaningful conversation. During the story building is also where the impersonal perspective comes to show. In the example you can see on the screen, you get to visit and interact with yourself. I'm confused to what the perspective really is, but if you're able to both see and interact with yourself, the only logical conclusion is that the perspective can be personal. All this story building and the messages on the screen leads to the game being an interpretive experience. I wouldn't say the game is very explorative. Even though you are free to roam the many stages, it isn't the selling point of the game. The main menu is however very explorative. You can find art, easter eggs and even small games all within the main menu. Perhaps the game's strongest user function is the configurative part. You have a lot of choice when it comes to choosing which weapon suits best for clearing all the stages.